Welcome to today's webinar, DNA, Become a Pro Content Marketer. This is for equity crowdfunding campaigns. This is for investor acquisition, can also be applied to user acquisition. It is my distinct pleasure, honor to be here with Damaris Morse today, who oversees the content marketing division for DNA shown rapid growth based on the success of her campaigns. This is a rare look to see the inner workings, the tactics, all of the individual pieces that make these campaigns successful. Damaris, excited to be here with you today. Hi, Jason. Thank you for the wonderful introduction. Uh, yes, my name is Damaris, and I am the content marketing manager at DNA. And today we are discussing how to become a pro content marketer. Um, so let me pull up and share my screen really quickly here. Looks like I need screen sharing abilities, Jason. Can you pass that on to me, please? Absolutely. Absolutely. As I am setting all of um, that up, I uh, want to talk about what content marketing really does for our campaigns. We'll get clients to ask us, hey, can we just run advertising? I heard that's performance-based. And as a rule of thumb, any campaign with the content marketing funnel, with the content marketing campaign is going to perform at higher levels. I would not recommend running one without some type of approach here. And that's what we're gonna be honing in on today. Yeah, so that's a perfect segue into why content for investor acquisition. I think Jason, when we're talking to clients a lot, we always get the question like why spend on content when I can invest in the same, the same amount of dollars in advertising and potentially see a higher ROI. And what's your answer to that? So for me is only a portion of your raise is going to come directly from the advertising itself. Uh, the other is going to come from a portal from content sharing and peer-to-peer -peer marketing that's occurring. This is designed not only to create a more uh, engaging, more converting funnel, as just mentioned, and get a higher conversion rate of all of that advertising traffic that's coming through. It's also set up so let's say someone doesn't see an ad, but they start searching around, they're doing due diligence, this allows them to see momentum, all types of traction, something that they want to get on board with. Right. And I think from my end, too, I always am describing the funnel for investors. You know, advertising is all about bringing the traffic into your funnel. However, most investors, before they invest in your brand, will do due diligence and they will want to check out your social media feed. They're going to go read a blog post. They're going to check out your website and they might even follow your email so it's important to have content filling in the mid part of the funnel to help give them the extra touch points. So like we said here, it takes seven to 13 touch points for a conversion, including investment. So all these pieces of content that we're funneling to investors ultimately helps them kind of get off the fence and convert into an investor for your brand. Absolutely. And imagine if they get to that funnel, imagine if they do a Google search and they pull up the social page for your brand and there's nothing there or posts from months back. And then they look at the next investment opportunity on that portal and they see uh, you know, long form articles, influencer posts, all different types of upcoming webinars. It's a completely different experience. It says a lot about the brand that they're researching. Right. It does, again, fill in that mid part of the funnel and give extra context to who you are as a brand, why you're doing your raise and what's your overall story. It creates more emotional connection. So that's why we need to have content for any investor or user acquisition campaigns. Um, and really there's only three phases of content. And when we break it down, it's broken down into the strategy. You need to have a global understanding of why you're producing content, who you're producing it for, and when you're going to publish it. And then the second stage is development, understanding how you're actually going to create content, what the workflow look like, looks like and what the processes are around that and keeping everything organized. There's a lot of moving parts in content compared to setting up an advertising campaign. So being organized is the key to unlocking execution. And then distribution is the last part. So where are you gonna distribute your content to? On what channels? 
and how frequently. There's no point in creating a piece of content if you're just going to post it once, it goes out into the internet ether to never be seen or heard of again. So distribution, I think, in my personal opinion, is where the magic happens. And figuring out the strategies for distribution are going to make or break the success of your content. So today's webinar, we're going to look at each three, uh, each part of the, these phases and give you some tips, tricks, hacks um, to create your strategy to develop better content and distribute it so it gets in front of more investors eyes. Okay, so how to create a content strategy. So what do you create in the first place? I think there's four key things that you have to include in your strategy. You have to identify your investor audience. You have to conduct a competitor audit to see what else is around you in your niche. What brands are your competitors and how are they running their campaigns? You have to identify which channels are most likely going to be successful. Where is your audience hanging out? And four, you have to map out your content calendar. You have to map each individual piece of content to the user or investor journey as well. And we're gonna go a little bit deeper into these four steps. Investor personas, as a, a marketing agency that actually originally started with advertising, we've been running advertising campaigns for over six years and really getting into the nitty gritty of the persona or the investor and what that looks like for advertising campaigns. And it actually directly bleeds into our content as well. And with Jason's experience working in advertising and media buying, he can actually directly speak to what the investor audience looks like. So you know exactly how to target them in your content or even in ads as well. Absolutely. And our whole philosophy towards marketing here, as you can see in the deck, as you can see in the background is, is test, optimize, scale. We, we summarize everything we do into that, it encapsulates our process. So the same is true with investor personas. You want to come up with A-B tests, A-B variants of the audiences, uh, of the messaging, of the funnel that they're going down. This is tactics that we take from media buying, but it certainly applies to organic in the content marketing funnel here. If something's not working, if we're not getting a strong enough response that we are anticipating from an audience, we want to come up with optimizations before we filter them out, ultimately optimize to the audiences that are working best and look to really scale things from there. Uh, but we want to look at an investor persona and even come up with the fictional name at times to really humanize that audience and get an understanding of what Bill does on the weekends and what sites he goes to and who the biggest influencers in his life are. How is Bill gonna to respond to that content? And most importantly, share that content. Uh, we, we like to say content marketing is the creation of good engaging content that's designed for social sharing, for high authority links, high authority coverage from publishers, from influencers, from various types of groups. So what will make Bill share this with his closest friends, cohort, uh, you know, co-workers, what have you. Mm -hmm. I think the important reminder hit here is with equity crowdfunding and everyday investors, your everyday investor can also be a user of your brand. So you have to remember that the investor persona is slightly different in terms of your lifetime customer persona. However, there will be blends between the two. I think the most important distinction will most likely be the investor uh, behaviors, interests, and annual incomes and the publications that they're more likely to hang out on hang out on versus your lifetime user. So that is why we suggest to tease it out and make them two separate personas so you know exactly how to create content for your investor and then also your user and understand that there will be some overlap, but there are some key differences as well. The next step um, is to conduct a competitor audit. And Jason is very, very familiar with conducting SWOT audits um, and, and SWOT analyses as well um, for, from years of experience doing this. So he's going to talk directly about how to conduct a really successful audit to really glean a whole bunch of great insights from your competitors. Yes. And when I look at a marketing strategy, this is the piece that I want to be able to take a deeper dive on. Later, the projections, but the marketing competitor audit tells me what's going on in the space. It gives me a pulse of what's occurring. Without it, 
we're kind of just shooting in the dark in terms of what content we want to create. So if we're putting together a SWOT analysis, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, threats of the top brands in the space, the top brands in the space that are currently raising on the same equity crowdfunding portals, similar equity crowdfunding portals, you know, want to take a look at their website, uh, their blog, have they done any webinars, are they guests on any podcasts, we'll sign up for their email, uh, there's tools um, where we can look at which emails they've sent uh, in the past, such as uh, milled, um, social media, how often are they posting on their channels? Which channels are the most active for them? Can I tell which types of content are getting the most engagement and at which times uh, of the week from there? Uh, we'll do Google searches uh, to look at which news articles uh, have come up recently, which publishers have spoken about them, which influencers. I wanna have an exact understanding of how they're obtaining digital market share in this vertical. How how they're bringing on their investments. They say success leaves clues. We can look at the SWOT analysis and take those pieces and apply accordingly. We don't have to take everything, but you know, in the brand's own flavor uh, towards the content strategy. Excellent recommendations for tools here, uh, such as Uber Suggest, SEM Rush wealth of information there. You could really spend a lot of time uh, study old campaign analytics from platforms like King's Crowd, all types of great articles uh, that are uh, well around rev relevancy and investor acquisition on Crowdfund Insider. Uh, don't underestimate, you know, an hour or two hours of just Googling around and seeing what comes out and being able to talk about this. So we're presenting it to the client, to a third party, uh, present this with your team, present this with consultants, have that dialogue. It's a different conversation when there's multiple uh, parties, uh, different dynamic as a whole. Um, phase two, the campaign page audit, really, really uh, map out, dissect what was working for them on a psychological level from their audiences. That's the focal point of the campaign. That is the pitch uh, to replicate what's done offline, but you know, really built for thousands, uh, even more uh, audience members to take a look at. So mm -hmm. what is their campaign, campaign page video? Break it down as if you're writing the script and the different sections of it that they were trying to highlight, what they were trying to accomplish with it. Uh, the pitch deck, same concept, the perks, is this a driving factor for their campaign? Should this be included for yours? All questions to ask. The investor testimonials, people don't believe what they see online. So to have this type of social proof, third party validation present goes a long way and is reflected in the conversion rate. And the updates, how often were they posting? Do you see any type of lifts in the campaign along those updates? Really good understanding of what's working. So again, you can re-engineer it for your content marketing strategy. Exactly. Highly recommend creating a spreadsheet of campaigns, brands that you really felt compelled um, with as well, where you actually felt like you wanted to invest and take notes of the things that you liked on their campaign and what you believe could potentially be successful your, for your brand as well. So identifying your channels. Every brand is going to have slightly different traction on different channels. That's no doubt. However, from our personal experience, this is where we found investors really hang out. It's these three channels that no matter what, uh, you should be leveraging in an investor acquisition campaign, Facebook, especially if you are going to be do running Facebook ads. We specialize in Facebook ads, so it's a primary for us to create an engaging Facebook page and to build it all out and to be posting daily to Facebook. That way, if uh, an investor from an ad hops from the paid, uh, from an ad to a page, they are getting kind of the same messaging and it helps them push them down the funnel as well. Twitter, I think is an under leveraged platform. Um, it has a really large accredited investor community. So larger investors, on a community called FinTwit. And you can target this community by using relevant hashtags such as hashtag FinTwit, investing, investors, crowdfunding, and equity crowdfunding. Um, the great thing about Twitter is you can post multiple times a day. And I highly encourage you to post about two to four times a day on Twitter if you can, if you have the bandwidth for it. And to just basically splinter different pieces of content or even to retweet other tweets that you see in FinTwit or in equity crowdfunding or in your niche as well um, to create a more engaged platform through Twitter. 
And the last one is LinkedIn. There's two ways to leverage LinkedIn. One is your business page. Of course, you wanna show your business company page is active and engaged. But I think the more powerful um, way to use LinkedIn is in building a personal brand on the platform. And you can build a personal brand for a CEO by sharing statuses from your business's company page to your LinkedIn personal page and sharing a personal experience. I've gained this um, insight as working as a copywriter and editor for other marketing agencies. And we found that this technique, this strategy was really powerful and engaging because people love the personal share. They also wanna know the story behind the CEO and the brand. People these days want a company with a face attached to it. They wanna know who's behind the company and its success and why they're doing the raise. So if the CEO is building a personal brand and giving social shares through LinkedIn, it's going to create a bigger story and a more emotional connection to your brand and the raise as well. And the last piece for your content strategy is mapping out your content. So there are three parts to the user journey or the investor journey. It's awareness. When Investors are still just learning about your brand. There's consideration. So they know about your brand, but now they're deciding, well, what makes you different from X, Y, and Z competitor? And why should I invest in you? And then there's decision. So looking through testimonials and making that final choice of, is this the right investment for me? So each three phases of the funnel has different content that we should be making to fill out the funnel. And if you map out your content accordingly, you actually will be able to see where your funnel is lopsided. So just like the top of the funnel, which is the largest, you know, awareness is that top of the funnel is the first piece of content here. And because it's the largest, um, it's actually going to fill the majority of the funnel. So the content here, you're going to be creating more awareness content. This content includes industry news, thought leadership in the form of blog posts, uh, problem spotlight, so really highlighting the problem in your industry that you're solving, why equity crowdfunding, you know, your pitch deck is a great thing to share on social media as well. Um, sharing information about your team and doing team member spotlights are all great pieces of content to fill the awareness funnel that you can create in the form of blog posts and social media posts. The mid funnel piece is consideration. So again, they already know about your brand, but now they're like, well, what makes you different? So why invest in this brand? You really need to speak to your unique differentiators here. So what is setting you apart from the crowd? Proprietary technology is great. The perks or benefits of investing, special partnerships that are pushing you forward in the market, any relevant press or social proof, Updates on your campaigns and investor Q&As are gonna be great content for the mid funnel piece. And the last end of the funnel, the smallest tip, which actually will um, be the least amount of content that you create, but also equally as important. This is the pushing point essentially for investment is social proof and who's invested in us before. So investor testimonial testimonials will be key, key in your campaign. Um, you also need user and product service testimonials, influencer testimonials, and also any white papers or case studies too that you can show proof that what you have works and is worth investing in. Okay, so developing your content. So now you have your strategy, you know what you're gonna create. Now it's like, well, how do I create this? And how do I do this while saving time? I think the biggest barrier to entry to creating content is I don't have enough time. There's so many moving parts to content and nobody can seem to figure out in their busy schedule, when am I gonna write this blog post? How am I gonna plan out these social media calendars? Um, let me tell you now, I know it feels overwhelming, but from experience, I know the key is to get organized, to really leverage interviews and to create templates. And overall, if you leverage these three tips, you're gonna save a lot of time on, and stress on your end. And you're gonna find that you actually enjoy creating content and create content where you're scraping kind of the top of the barrel, the creative barrel and creating the best content you can as well. So let's talk a little bit more about these three tips. Okay, so developing your content. 
it's so important that you keep your content organized in a content calendar. You can use a project management system tool like Monday or Asana or Asana uh, to create a content calendar and a production workflow. That way you can record every single part of what goes into creating, for instance, a blog or a webinar. You can assign appropriate tasks to people and you can um, keep it all organized in a very visual view. I recommend Monday as it creates a lot of different views, but you could use um, other tools like Asana or Asana, Asana or even a spreadsheet as well. Leverage interviews. This is something I've gained experience from, uh, from my writing career. I found that was a very successful process for creating high quality content in kind of a short period of time. Create an outline with questions interview yourself or interview the person who you feel is a relevant subject matter expert. You can have that interview transcribed using different transcription tools like Scribby, Rev, or Trent. And then you can listen to the transcription or you can read the transcription to write a blog post. This also goes for creating webinars, and this is actually how we created our webinar today, was doing a quick interview, being able to outline the entire webinar and deciding which content was going to flow where. You can also use this to transcribe podcasts or things like that into blog posts. So leverage interviews wherever you can possible. Um, you can even interview investors to create blog posts like that. Um, you can interview maybe customers who are forever loyal customers in your brand. It's a great strategy to create content in a quicker way without having to sit at your computer and see a huge wall of writer's block in your way. And then to create templates, this is the last tip here. Templatize your social media calendar as much as you can. So I suggest looking at your calendar on a monthly view saying like, okay, I have maybe 20 to 30 posts I need to make for my social media calendar. What are those themes or little templates that I want to create on a day-to-day -day basis? I know maybe every Monday I post a blog post. On Tuesday, I'm gonna do a service or product feature and talk about my brand and create some brand awareness. I might even post a market statistic or market opportunity on Wednesday. On Thursday, I'm gonna showcase relevant testimonials, a case study or success story. And then Friday, I'm gonna promote my campaign and post a link to my raise page. And then you can rinse and repeat every week. So create a batch of your themes and then mix them up into the calendar accordingly. This will save you so much time when you think about what do I need to post today? You don't run into that problem. You know exactly what you're gonna post and you can even create corresponding graphic templates in Canva and then just load them all up in Canva and then distribute them on a distributor tool, kind of like Buffer, Sprout, Hootsuite, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, the last piece here is distribution. So how do you extend the value of content? Like I said, I think this is where most of the magic happens in making sure that your content um, is, you're squeezing every ounce of value out of your content and not just creating one post and done. Four ways here, social media splinters or creating smaller pieces of content from larger pieces of content essentially, publisher outreach, email, and growth campaigns. Splintering, so like I said, it's a strategy to repurpose content by taking a big piece of content, say like a blog post, a webinar, a podcast, and breaking it up into smaller chunks for social media. So maybe you have a 30 minute webinar like here. What we can do is break this up into 60 seconds, two minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes clips, and post them on social media that way and extend the value of our content and keep promoting this webinar over and over and over again for months on end, essentially, however many splinters we're able to create. We can also turn this webinar into a quick infographic or even a carousel for Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook. And again, promote the, and watch the entire webinar video, right? Um, you can also take a blog post and say you have five things in your blog post, you can break each one into an info, into a separate post on social media with the corresponding graphic or video, et cetera, et cetera. 
there are tons of ways to splinter content and I highly, highly encourage you to repurpose your content as much as you can to squeeze out every drop of value. So you're not just posting one blog and done and it's gone to the ether forever. You can take that blog and find creative ways to promote it two times a week, three times a week with different small splinters. Some other ways to repurpose, um, I highly recommend transforming video content like a webinar or a podcast and having it transcribed into a blog, which will help support your SEO efforts on your long form page, on your in your long form content or on your website. And then it will also allow you to attract and engage different types of learners in your audience. Some people prefer to read, some pre people prefer to watch, and some people prefer like an infographic, right? So by transforming your content into all these three types of mediums, you'll be able to attract all those different learners and engage them correspondingly. Okay, number two is publisher outreach. And Jason can speak really strongly to publisher outreach as he's had huge success um, getting on large platforms like Forbes, Business Insider, et cetera, et cetera. And these are through some organic and some paid efforts as well, but it's so important to get your content on relevant third-party publishers. Yes, and I can't emphasize enough how powerful these ideas Damaris is mentioning here are. And when you look at equity crowdfunding campaigns, the majority of issuers do not activate any of these. Uh, they may write out a few that they're going to do, the portals push them to, but it, it simply doesn't happen. And that is very true about publisher outreach here as well. Uh, as mentioned, third-party validation is everything. If it says as seen on and there's a few logos, audiences may not even look at the logos. It just shows a strong level of support, strength in numbers, that line around the block feeling. So that's what we're looking to accomplish here uh, on distributing your content. Uh, put together a list. You can do all types of searches for your niche, uh, similar companies in your niche, uh, publications, your niche, blogs, your niche, views. Aggregate a list of potential publishers into a list. Uh, your list needs to be a variety of equity crowdfunding business and industry specific of publishers. Do not focus on just one. And then put together a pitch template. The conversations you're going to have with these guys are similar. Uh, add something new and custom to each message, but, but have some type of pitch template, which will give you a better idea of that messaging sequence, that funnel that you're going to be activating. Uh, pro tips, do your research. Don't pitch anything they've already published. It's already been there. It's already been part of their editorial calendar. Dig around for the editor's name and reach out to them directly if possible. Uh, don't get too uh, you know, much in spy mode, but go on social channels, DM them, find a way to contact them that they're gonna want to respond to. Keep your pitch short and sweet and follow up at least two to three times. Um, while going on to the next page, want to answer a couple questions that are put on here as well too, as applicable for this section in terms of what are the best crowdfunding sites you recommend. If you look at King's Crowd and you look at their investor lists here, uh, the top six are Start Engine, WeFunder, Republic, Seed Invest, MicroVentures, and Net Capital. Also, hearing great things about a new launch around Title Three funds. We definitely recommend uh, talking to all these groups as you're putting something together, uh, as you're creating an investor list or segment for your your email for your newsletter audience. Um, you could look at those portals, their audiences, how they would respond if they start getting your updates as you're posting on the portal, similar messaging that you're putting on the email here. Uh, do not underestimate your existing network. Uh, we'll speak to groups who say there's limitations there. Uh, we, we've spoken with uh, CEOs in their 50s, 60s who are reaching out to their, their college fraternity brothers, uh, their friends from that point in time. Uh, you know, you really want to stretch here. Um, one of the portals says don't start with at least 200 contacts in this first list of family, friends, your professional network. Add in investors from your existing campaign. Uh, they could become your strongest asset as this moves along. Run a lead form ad on Facebook, which is autofill. You press one button. Maybe you're paying a dollar, two dollars per new audience member that's being submitted there. Email them, campaign promos, updates, uh, have your blog post featured there. Great way to, to tease them on the content, get a click and convert and show thought leadership throughout the entire process. Uh, webinars, podcast episodes, product and service development, new partners can all be part of this weekly update, this weekly showcase of momentum. Right. 
I think the important thing is that you are just touching them on a weekly basis in this very personal channel, which is email, which is still very, very powerful and relevant. It's unlike social where your content doesn't get lost in the feed. It's delivered right to your inbox to their inbox. And this is already a very warm audience who wants to see your content. Investors want updates. And in fact, they might know in the back of their mind, I'm going to invest maybe $5,000 more if they hit this raise amount, right? So if you deliver that investment update right to their inbox, in a moment, you can see five, ten, twenty thousand $20,000 roll in just from one email. It's quite incredible. And the last way to distribute your content is through growth campaigns and native advertising. Jason. Yes. So this is the merge of paid and organic. Uh, you could be running Facebook like campaigns, which Facebook's algorithm will be optimizing towards the top engaging audiences. Uh, uh, this is to get more likes for your actual page where a boosted post is going to be more likes, comments, shares of individual posts, uh, reaching out to investors and influencers to give you shout outs or to share your content. Uh, we've seen issuers have their top investors, head of an accelerator, head of a group of investors, their first investor all on video calls and using that for different pieces of content. Then each of the investors share it on their individual feeds. We've seen initiatives where a post is put up and then hundreds of the investors from the portal, uh, from their live campaign uh, are then doing a comment. They're encouraged to do so from another form of marketing. The way these platforms, the way these uh, tools work, the AI behind them, again, puts it into everyone's feeds, their followers, um, then get to see posts that their friends have recently commented on, uh, extremely effective. Uh, asking your warm audience to share with engaging calls to action. Again, that peer-to-peer -peer marketing is just simply untouched uh, in comparison to other channels. And run a giveaway campaign in tandem on Gleam.io, which is a social sharing contest platform uh, where uh, audiences are giving more entries based on how much they're sharing. Awesome. That summarizes kind of that our how to become a content marketer or pro content marketer during your campaign. As you can see, there are a lot of moving parts here and a lot of thought that goes into creating a high quality content. But let us tell you, it is much, it is way worth the investment um, because ultimately content marketing builds relationships. It's not like a cold pitch, like an advertisement, right? And these relationships ultimately build trust and trust drives revenue or engagement or investment. So the more trust you can build in your brand and ingrain into your content, the more you're going to see your brand uh, gain traction. We are right at time here. Um, so if you have any questions, uh, feel free to message them to us right now. We're going to stay on the line for a little bit longer. For those of you that want to speak to us, we'll give you a couple minutes for questions. Um, we're all open ears and really here to provide support. So we're gonna lay everything out on the table for you. So feel free, ask away. Um, we're here for you for your campaign. Excellent. And, and Damaris, do you wanna start with uh, Sam's question of mm -hmm. how many customer personas should you look to identify and at what depth? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a great question. I would start with your minimum of two investor personas, your investor um, and then your customer, right? Then if you want to splinter your, your one investor, know that you can also break one investor into multiple depending on you know, age range. Maybe you have an investor who is much, much older, a much older woman. And then maybe you have an investor who is mid-range or more so my age between 25 and 45, and they all have different personalities, behaviors, interests, and needs. So it really depends on your business niche and the market, um, but you can splinter one large investor persona into multiple. So I can say between three to four, I mean, that is very common to also do for your user personas as well. Excellent.
Excellent. And it looks like we answered the other questions which have been submitted throughout uh, the presentation here, specifically about the equity crowdfunding platforms. Also questions about if the recording is, will be available. Yes, uh, it'll be on YouTube. Maybe you're watching it there now. Uh, we'll be sharing this in our email. Um, if you have not signed up for our email, uh, definitely recommend uh, doing so. Uh, you will be updated on the next webinars just like this to come. We'll be hosting uh, monthly different presentations for each of our focuses of marketing, uh, as well as different types of uh, tactics, different areas uh, of focus that are particularly um, results oriented that month for us. We wanna be uh, at the forefront of everything that's occurring in equity crowdfunding. So sign up for our email, follow our social channels, do not uh, hesitate to contact us directly with any questions that may come up from this presentation after today's discussion. And, uh, and yeah, again, Damaris, this has been extremely excitful and insightful. If anyone wants to get in touch with you directly, uh, what is your preferred communication method? Sure, you can reach out to me anyway. I'm on social, I'm on LinkedIn, so feel free to message me through LinkedIn. Um, you can also email me as well at dmorse at Digital Niche Agency anytime. So I am here for your questions. You can also contact us on our website too, where I can reach out to you directly as well. So any method really works for me. Excellent, excellent. And again, hope you guys were taking notes. These are the exact approaches we take uh, for our clients over 400 a day, equity crowdfunding, nine figures of funding have been produced from these exact methods. So definitely integrate them to your strategies as applicable. Thanks again for joining us today and we'll see you next time. Thank you guys. Have a good day.